why do scratch golfers make less mistakes than you out on the golf course? Today, I'm going to be running you through five habits of scratch golfers to help you lower your scores. Now, when it comes to tee shots, scratch golfers are typically a lot better at knowing where they miss. Now, some of this comes back to actually collecting the shot scope stats or stats with whatever software you like to use or even just manually with paper because you can see where you've been missing more which means when you come to holes like this we're on the 18th at Alcanada you can think oh for me I definitely miss it more up the left I can see there's loads of bunkers there I'm going to block myself out if I get in there I'm not going to be able to get up to the green so how can I think about kind of changing my strategy or my aim to make sure I'm not in that really bad spot that one, I know where I miss more often, and two, where it's not very good for the hole. So one, I'm analysing what's in front of me, and then two, I'm taking the shot or the miss that I know comes in the most and kind of moving my shot shape or my direction around because of that. I saw a coach doing this drill before with some players, and it's one that I quite like a lot for visualising. And actually, you can take kind of three points. So what is the furthest left I can aim and what is the furthest right I can aim? So here... I don't really want to be going anywhere near that bunker so kind of my red line is like here and I don't want to be any further left at that. Now actually on the right point here there is some trees that come in back and fly it over that and the hole does open up a little bit there. So I've got a little bit more room up the right than you might actually think. I think that just gives you a nice visual nearer the ball of where you need to aim. Now, then what I'm going to do is take an alignment stick and think, what is my shot shape? Okay, I'm going to draw a little bit more. I'm going to move it more right to left. So actually, I probably need to be more in this portion over here and then moving the ball towards the left side of it. Just a better way to think about your shot shape and the area you're trying to hit the ball in. Now, I'm not suggesting you do this every hole out on the golf course. You'd probably wind your playing partners up. But it's quite a good visual to do maybe on the driving range, set a fairway, do a similar thing, or just do it for one or two holes when you're out practicing and just think about your target more and what you're trying to do relative to your miss. Hopefully you'll hit more fairways that way. I mean, I've actually left the face massively open on that, which is the opposite of what I normally do. But because I've got that more extra space on the right, it's still in play, so I can hit my next shot. I've still got a good angle into the green. I'm not in a pesky bunker or behind a tree. So it's just all about that strategy. How can I hit probably one of my worst shots and still be in play? Don't be thinking about, am I going to flush it and hit my perfect shot and everything else can be fine. Now, a big thing scratch golfers are better at than the rest of the handicap range is not firing at the pin. <laughs> it can be so tempting, especially when it's like a front pin to think, oh, I can just drop it on the front of the green and give myself a nice birdie putt. But in the reality, we're just not that good. Now, if we look at the shot scope stats, scratch golfers are missing the green shot 25% of the time. Now, if we move up to like the average handicap, so the average handicap in the UK is 17, for a 15 handicapper, 54% of their shots are finishing short of the green. So over half of the time they pull a club out of the bag, they're not getting the ball back to the green. So a really simple way to lower your scores is to stop trying to go for the pin or the front edge, try to get your ball to the middle or even the back of the green, because actually in reality, it's probably going to end up on the front edge. Now, here is a great example. We've got the pin on the front. It's up a slight slope. I've got my shots got blazer out and I'm going to look at just how much the slope is affecting the play here because I think that's a big thing people don't think about. So I've got 113 yards. This is the new Pro ZR. So this has the slope function that you can turn on and off here. And this is telling me I need an extra six yards because of the slope. So that's 119 already. Then taking into the fact the pins at the front, I probably want to play 10 past that. I'm looking at like a 130 shot for a 113 pin. So that is a big amount of difference and definitely something that I think most golfers wouldn't think to go up that amount. Add to the fact here, I'm playing into the green and also I'm on a slight upslope. So if you're on an upslope, that's gonna add more loft to your club. So this 9 is gonna play a little bit more down towards a pitching wedge. So we need to take all that into account when we're playing to that pin. So this is like a 135 club for me. I think given the little bit of slope, this is probably gonna end up pretty perfect and hopefully leave me in the middle of the green. Cleared out just as I wanted, although I'm not gonna lie, I did pull it a little bit. I wasn't going dead at the pin, but sometimes your bad shots end up near the pin by accident. Now, it might be hard to believe that just changing your club selection can actually lower your scores, but if we look at the stats, like people are missing left and right under 10%. The really big misses are short of the green. 
So next time you're playing, just think a little bit more about what club you're pulling out of the bag. So scratch golfers get up and down around the greens a lot more than the average handicap golfer. But there's a few different reasons for that. And one of them is they're just much better at shot selection. Now, I think some of us watch so much tour golf, it's just like instinct to pull out our lob wedge and think, right, that's the shot to go. Don't even think about it, just hit the chip shot. And then you end up with like your duffs, your thins, inconsistent strikes, because we're not tour pros and we don't chip it like they do. So we shouldn't really expect to use the same club and get the same results. Now, there's so many ways you can chip a ball onto the green. And in terms of like the mid and higher handicappers, a lot of the time it's just about getting the ball somewhere on the green and then giving yourself the chance to two put. Because actually getting down in three is really taking any big scores off the scorecard. And we don't want that situation where you get one up the slope here, it's a bit grainy grass, we're out of the rough we fat it and it runs back to our feet and suddenly we've got the same shot all over again and we're nowhere near getting up and down. Now if we look at the stats from ShotScope, the best club to be using most of the time is actually your putter because scratch golf is getting up and down 81% of the time using their putter regardless of the lie which is kind of mind-boggling isn't it? If we compare that to using their lob wedge it drops down to 43% of the time. Now obviously some of that's going to come into lie it can be easier to use a putter sometimes and you're in an easier location but actually a lot of the times even like in the rough like this you can be using a putter. Now if we move into that mid handicap range 15 handicap stat you're still getting up and down 71% of the time with putter which is only 21% of the time with a lob wedge so if we stood here with five balls and got a 15 handicap they might get one up and down with a wedge but nearly three or four with a putter so why are we not trying different options so what i've got here is i've got a putter i've got my lob wedge i've got a nine iron and also i've got a hybrid because i think a lot of people maybe don't feel comfortable using a putter in this situation where it's a bit of rough it looks a bit silly but actually playing a bump and run with a hybrid can be really effective so let's just go for a few different shots and show you how you can be saving shots around the green rather than just using your lob wedge. So what I'm going to do here is just get a hybrid grip down and use it like a putter, but it's going to give me a little bit more ball speed, which is going to be easier to get it up to the pin and out of this rough. Now you can see how easy that was. I barely had to make any length of stroke. It's running really quickly and it's up on the green. In this case, I've actually hit it pretty close, probably about six, seven feet. But what this shot is really good at is taking out any really inconsistent strikes. It's getting the ball moving towards the pin really quickly, really easily, and just giving you a nice easy two push. You're getting out there with three, no problems. And also I'm giving myself a really good look up and down. Now this is going to be really similar with putter. I'm probably going to have to hit this a little bit harder to get it up the hill. But if you're someone who just likes to put everywhere, this is still a great option. You can see how much softer that came out than hybrid, but actually it's on the green, it's not really causing me any problems. Okay, nine iron time. Shot scope actually say that scratch golfers get up and down the second most with their eight iron. I forgot to bring my eight iron, so nine iron is. Similar thing, low shot, put in stroke, bump and run. I feel like I showed the stats were correct there. That was nice. Obviously with this you can fly it a little bit further if you've got more stuff in front of you but it still gives you that nice release out and gets it near. Now lob wedge. This is obviously still a good option if you're skilled with this club but in this instance here we're obviously playing out the rough. We're up a slope so there's potentially if we hit it heavy <laughs> it could run back to us. Also the green's like really sloped to the front but then flattens out so there's not much landing space to get it near the pin. Now, I love chipping and I practice it a lot, so I've played that shot all right, but there's a lot less margin for error with this and it could go wrong. So if you want to get up and down more, or even if you just want to bring down how many shots you're having around the green, increase your consistency with your chipping, I would recommend trying some more clubs. <laughs> what if I hit the camera? Oh, played it. Don't do that. So I think a massive area where scratch golfers gain on the average golfer is actually with their expectations of what is and isn't a good shot. <laughs> it's so easy to go out on the golf course on a Saturday and see people so frustrated at shots they've hit. And sometimes that's valid, but a lot of the times the shot you've hit actually wasn't that bad compared to your handicap and what actually is a good shot. Now you might think getting annoyed with yourself is irrelevant and it doesn't really matter and 
that's not going to affect my score. I'm not going to score any better. But actually, <laughs> the more and more you get annoyed through the round, you're just getting more tense, you're getting more aggravated, you're then getting more aggressive, trying to go for more shots that you definitely can't pull off. And that's not going to help you score at all. Like We know the best I ever play my golf is when I'm very relaxed. I'm not really thinking about the score. I'm just playing and not thinking about anything. So actually getting really tense, getting angry at yourself, it's not going to help anything. And it's definitely not going to make it enjoyable. We're on the 16th here at Alcanada. I've got 150 yards to the pin. As a scratch golfer, using my 7-iron from this distance, I should only hit the green 41% of the time. That means on a par four, where a scratch golfer has a seven iron into the green, statistically, they're gonna score over par every time. So actually, if you're getting anywhere near the green with the seven iron, you're doing a really good job. Now, if we go into that mid handicap range and look at the stats for a 15 handicapper, you should actually only be hitting the green with a seven iron 20% of the time. So if you stand here and hit 10 balls, you're only gonna hit that green twice. In fact, your distance from the pin on average will be 146 feet. Most greens aren't wider than 40 feet. So actually, if you're anywhere within like 10, 20 yards of the green, you've hit a really good shot with your seven iron. And telling yourself off and having a go at yourself in the fairway is pretty dumb because you've hit a better than average shot if you've got the ball like within 10 yards of the green with your seven iron. So if you want to lower your scores, maybe dive into the stats understand what a good shot is and just be a little bit less harsh on yourself. Now scratch golfers are much better at analysing holes and understanding the risk associated with certain misses. So if we take a look at this par 3 here, we're on the 17th Al Canada, there are a lot of bunkers short left. <laughs> And we know statistically mid to high handicappers are not great from bunkers. If a 15 handicap misses a green, they'll get up and down on average 34% of the time. If they miss in the bunker, that drops down to 18%. Likewise, if we moved up to a 25 handicap, they should get up and down about 20% of the time. But when they get in the sand, that drops down to 10%. So if you were to drop 10 balls in the bunker up there, you'd only get one of them up and down. Now obviously that's severely affecting how you're going to score on this hole and that's not even taken into the fact that you might not hit a great shot, leave it in the bunker, thin it out, leave yourself another really difficult shot. So actually when we're looking at this hole, those bunkers should be really big red flags, like red crosses through them. We do not even want to look at that. We're moving our target much further over to the right and thinking, even if I miss this green shot right, there's loads of short grass that's fairway there that I can get my putter out and just roll it up to the pit. Sometimes it might be best to miss long, but in this instance, we're going down over a hill. We're probably going to leave ourselves a chip up over a hill down the green, which could be fast, so not necessarily the best option. But what you need to really think about out on the course is where are bad spots that are going to drive my score up and where can I hit the ball that's actually going to make me shoot the lowest score. And <laughs> in this scenario, you might actually be aiming to miss the green shot right, which sounds stupid, but if we go back to further in this video, you can remember we've got over 140 feet average for a 7-iron. So actually, most of your shots are going to miss the green. So just bringing your ball to an area where it's less likely to be in that really severe hazard that's going to drive the scores up high is a really sensible thing to do. So in this instance, what I'm going to do is use that tower that's on the right edge of the green as my target line. It means if I push it a little bit, I'm going to miss the green right. If I hit a good shot, it'll just catch the right edge. And if I pull it, it's going to end up on the green. But what that means is even if I hit a really bad pull shot, it shouldn't end up anywhere near those bunkers. Golf is really about managing your bad shots and getting yourself around the course. It's not about hitting perfect shots every time because scratch golfers do not play perfect golf. They do not hit perfect shots every time, but they do get the ball around the course and they do get around in a lot less shots from you. So sticking to these habits that we've talked through in this video today can make you a better golfer. And the good news is a lot of them don't actually require any upgrade to your technique.